How we doing, traders? Welcome to Money Mitch. Of course, we got another jam-packed show. We're going to have a great interview on for you guys. This is a cloud-based marketing company, Zeta Global uh, Holdings. We'll have David Steinberg. Definitely, guys, stay tuned. We're going to get into the hot sectors, the industries of the day. What did I trade today on live trading? So stick around, hit that thumbs up, and welcome to Money Mitch. It's time for Money Making Mitch. When investors need a story, we're going to the moon. Welcome to Money Mitch, where story is everything. I'm here to find you the next opportunity. It's all about the green hand. Now we all know the bull market is here to stay. Money Mitch. What's going on, traders? How we doing out there? Definitely smash the like button. Welcome, Benzinga family. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get this party started. All right, let's take a look at the overall market. What are we seeing out there and what has been moving here? So on the daily chart, uh, we were looking at this trend, right? We were looking for 463s really to hold here. Uh, now we went down towards this 461s. We're starting to get back above this 463. Uh, Want to make sure that we hold this on pullbacks. So right now we just cleared that area. We want to hold it on some pullbacks. It's 463.50s. And then kind of stay in this 470, 463 so that we can get back on up there, eventually breaking out of this kind of trap zone that we've been in on the SPY. Uh, let's take a look at the Qs. All right, taking a look at the Qs here. Uh, looks like they're trying to get above 400 here and push on up there to the 405. We'll see if we can get on up there to that next level and get on up there to the 405s. I really want to see it get back above 400. If not, we could stay in this kind of chop zone. We'll see what happens here. And if we can get back above 400, we'll be looking good. Today, we did touch a little bit above that, 40, 473, but then keep above it. Now we're turning back below it. Let's see if we can get above. All right, going ahead and catching up with the chat. What's going on out there in the Zinger Nation? want to see uh, if you guys were able to join on in. We were on uh, at the close here. going to go ahead and check. Smash the like button, guys. Where, where are you guys at? All right, let me see how many people we got. We got about 63 people watching here. Don't see anybody in the chat, so say hello. If you're new to the show, say hello. All right, let's go ahead. Let's keep going in the stocks. Let's take a look at the strong sectors and what was moving today. So if we take a look here at the close, we're getting technology actually to lead us from the open. That's what I try to pay attention to. Semiconductor stocks really pushing on up there. Uh, so we can talk a little bit about those, some stocks that were strong today, AVGO, definitely keep that one on your radar. It's pushing back from 550s. Uh, NVIDIA also staying strong at that 320. So we're going to see it start pushing. What's going on out there? Jonathan, shy audience today. Proton in the house. Jerry, what's up? Martin, how we doing out there? Uh, let's go ahead and see these uh, NXPI also looking strong here, looking like it wants to hold this 220, start breaking out and going towards, I would say towards the 250s. You can draw a trend line from this last peak that you had, and you can see that as long as we can hold like above this 220.94s tomorrow, I can see this one breaking on out. I can keep this one on watch NXPI. We'll see what happens. Daryl, what's up? Chaz, how we doing? All right, let's take a look here. Uh, XLNX also strong. Uh, QCOM, another one that's kind of hidden strong here, hidden strength that no one's really paying attention. You could see that next lift going up to 200. We'll see if it gets through that uh high that you have here, this 190, and just continues on going. This 186, uh, we'll see if it can get through that level. AMD also having a strong day, also staying in trend. This stock loves to stay in trend. This is why it's very important to draw these trend lines so that you can buy the stock when it breaks that trend that one or two days and you could have been holding at the at the next layer support, maybe this 142, getting in there at 146, 145, you could have ride up towards this move, which would have been a nice 12% move. 
MU. Let's take a look at Micron. I saw it mentioned in the chat. Also strength. Uh, so watch this one. Try to take out the highs. You know, this one has been really trying to get through this little uh, flag right here. So we'll see if it can get through that. But after that, you know, you got clear skies up to the 90. And then from there, I think you're going to try to get back through this 95 period. So we'll see if MU can get on through that. Keep these on watch. They're definitely hot. Uh, another thing that happened today is that I saw a lot of these kind of tech stocks kind of bounce back. These software stocks, Zscaler pushing on up here. Now you want to see it hold 350s. How did Asana do today? Even Asana bouncing back a little bit there. So just be careful, you know. Uh, there's a lot of stocks on the move right now, and they're having big, big uh, bounces and push-ons up. Look at HubSpot. HubSpot trying to push through 900. This was a stock that in 2020 was down by 130s, almost 900, 540% move in HubSpot. It's been an absolute monster. Monday bouncing back also. This was the stock that I was going to see if it was going to break down, but – it wants to come right back up and roaring. One of the things that helps this stock is that it does have a nice weekly chart. So look for Monday to continue the strength and get on up. Let's go ahead. Let's keep going. What other strength that we see? Utilities looking strong also. What are the names that I've been giving in utility? Duke is one of the names that I'm looking at getting on up there to the 105. We'll see if we can get on up to those levels as D-U-K. And, of course, we'll also look at another one that I like, Portland. Uh, so this is P-O-R, Portland General Electric. We're going to look for this one to get into 51s and push on up there to the next level, maybe 60s or 55s. Let's see if we can get that lift in regulated electric city, uh, electric, electric here. Uh, you also got EXL. Uh, you can take a look at this one, E-X-E-L. I'm going to look for this one to come up through this uh, 65, 50s, get on up there to 70. We'll see how this one performs. This one is in a symmetrical triangle pattern. So you guys can see how it kind of has this middle point right now that we've been getting above, but we can't hold. So let's see if we can get above this middle point again and then actually take out that 70, head towards that 75. This is XEL, so some energy plays. What's up, Mitch? Was the Dorsey News good for Square? We'll talk about uh, Dorsey News coming up next. All right. So other than that, real estate, not doing the worst there. Uh, you guys can take a look at some of these real estate stocks. I, I don't really trade these that often, but definitely this one looks really strong right now. PLD. Keep your eyes on a couple of these because when they start moving, a lot of people just miss the moves like this cube looks prime. Uh, why? Because there is this big volume that got stuck right here uh, that could have been a big buyer. So you want to see them get through that level. If we get through 56 tomorrow, you could get a, a big push through this cube. Um, this is a real real estate in, industrial REIT. Uh, we'll see if these can keep pushing. Uh, definitely keep these on watch. You never know when these can make a next move. I love when they set up weekly moves. So definitely uh, these are some that I would keep these on watch and and put some alerts let's let's set alert on that one actually let's go back to cube we're going to send an alert here at 55 at let's do it at 60 56 10 so tomorrow it could hit if it goes through that level all right so on the downside what did we get today so downside action is going to show you Healthcare on the downside. Look at this turnaround that we got in healthcare stocks, guys. So it was looking like it wanted to break out. Now we're getting that turnaround. What did bad today was drug manufacturers. Let's take a look here. Uh, so PFE pulled back a little bit. Uh, BMY. Um, really, I think these are getting dragged down because of this one right here. Uh, Merck. Uh, Merck did kind of put out that pill, that COVID pill, but then it really wasn't uh, kind of effective towards COVID. So we're seeing this really get hit. I think this you're going to see this come down towards 60, uh, and that's what's going to drag it down. Also, Bristol Myers getting dragged down there. You can see this red. Look how this is really turned around, not looking good right now. All right, so let's go to that Jack Dorsey news. So definitely smash the like, guys. Let's keep this going. Uh, we're going to get into Zeta coming up soon. In about three minutes, we should get into Zeta. Uh, let's go ahead and let's keep it going. Go Monday, says RM. Can't blame you for that. Uh, so TA wanted to talk about the Dorsey news and if it's good for Square. So, of course, we found out today that Twitter's CEO is stepping down. So T uh, TWTR. 
uh, is stepping down. And look how that one turned around. Ugly, ugly day there for Twitter. Uh, it popped up at first. I even traded this one, but I was able to get stopped out here really quickly for a very minimal loss there on Twitter. Let's take a look here um, at Square. That was the one that you wanted me to uh, look at, and it kind of looks like the same chart. Uh, so to me, just be careful with these. I know that these can come off support here, but I, I've been really animate about being careful about payment stocks uh, like PayPal, and also MasterCard, I, I haven't liked too much. Uh, Visa also being a major one. I'm just not touching these right now. Until I all see these charts turn around, I am not touching it. Money time, money put in into work. That's the only way. G-I-L-D is actually one I like on in the biotechs. Uh, I do like that setup, starting to set up on a weekly and monthly. If you look at this on a monthly chart, it really looks nice. Gilead, if I was swing trading, I, I, I don't mind this one. This is a good setup. You got multiple bottoming action. What I always talk about, times to break down the stock, right? So you tried to break down the stock multiple times. You just did it another time. Then when you came on up here, look at when you came out of this, you tested up, pulled back to the support and actually push right off of that. So I would use that levels right now, those bottoms, those lows, maybe uh, 64 on the downside. Uh, so you're, you're pulling this up to 64. You're holding there and you're looking for the breakout right back up there towards the 80s. That's what you would want to see. And then it, through 83, next level up could get there to the 100s. It's looking good. I actually like this one. So, Martin, if you do like Gilead, it's an interesting chart, and I do like the bottoming actions. It could start lifting from here. Uh, Dorsey News will be good for Bitcoin. Yeah, it should be good for Bitcoin, but for Square, the only problem is, is that it's it has a really negative story right now. So you need to see some kind of positive come out. Really, I would look for Visa. Visa, I feel like, will lead. Um, if Visa bounces hard here from this 200 and can get really above this, then yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take a look. But for right now, it's still in this kind of downtrend. We haven't really got out of this downtrend period. Let's see if Visa can get out of that trend. All right, so it looks like we're getting to 415. Let's take a look at what else I traded today. PTPI. Uh, this one was an interesting one. I talked about it pre-market before the open here, and uh, it did a really nice move here. Uh, we talked about how we wanted to see it get back on up through. So I'm going to show you guys what I was seeing in pre-market. So in pre-market, we were looking at this pattern here. Uh, we were looking for it to kind of break out of that pattern so we could see this pullback. I said, yeah, you don't want to see a move towards $3. You want to see its strength go through 350s. And it tried to break that low here. You got what? One attempt, two attempts, three attempts. On this fourth attempt, it cleared right back on up there, getting up there and getting strong at the 350s, really pushing on up there towards 425. Eventually, this one did kind of more of a kind of hourly move here. Um, so definitely, this is why you have to have that multi-trend so you can see how it's still holding that hourly sideways. But it rode up there, it passed even five. Uh, so this was a monster move there, PTPI. We we're watching this one on live trading. Don't know if you're able to watch this one, Eagle, but definitely if you guys haven't seen live trading, every single day we do this live in front of you, breaking down these stocks, telling you what we're seeing, and that's what it's all about so that you can learn from the process and exactly how we go about it. All right, so another one that I'm starting to keep my eyes on to see what would happen is Palantir. Uh, Palantir has been a little bit sideways here, uh, so I want to see if it's going to wake on up and just start getting strong. 2033s would be my out on the downside. I do like the swing trade here. Um, I know that some people are doubting this company, but I do think it could get back into this circle up here. The big thing is I would look for an entry right over here, and I would make sure that I'm holding off that low that we just got uh, in the last week. Uh, so we won't want to break that on the downside. That That's a 2005. So you can say $20 is my out. Looking for the move back up to 25 and then through 
up their 230s. I'm going to call Palantir into the next month. Let's see what happens on this one. I do like the trade. It just needs to hold here and get right back on up there through 30s. We'll see if it gets on up there. Palantir. What's going on, Rando? How we doing out there? If you guys got a stock you guys want me to take a look at, go ahead and start throwing them up in the chat. I'll definitely start nailing some of these down. I'm going to take a quick sip of some water, check on my guests, and I will be right back. I tell all my CEOs, this is a very, very, very important platform. And look, all the other platforms are important too, but you're up there now. You're way up there. Best investments you can do in your future is actually go and, and, and uh, re-educate yourself on, on credible sites, incredible resources like uh, like Benzinga. You guys have been killing it. The comment section on this show is remarkable. Like like the quality of the combo and just big shout out to you and your community. So I love about you guys, you know, you just had the, all your coolers in right then. And it's all about the community here at Benzinga. What's going on, guys? How we doing? All right, let's go ahead. Let's keep this thing going. Let's take a look at what we are going to get into next. All right, guys, so let's go ahead. Um, going to be getting into it. Uh, it's, I got an interview coming up with Zeta. Looks like the guest is having some issues getting in here. So I'm going to leave out some of that information so we make sure that we get into that next. I'm going to look into what trades I could be getting into this week. So one thing that I wanted to take a look at is what could potentially move uh, going into the next year. So I've been really looking at this basic materials chart uh, because why? Because if you look at the monthlies, we were going straight on up and then we got this now sideways action. I want to see if we can get back on through there. Uh, stocks that are important in that area are going to be copper. Uh, we're going to look at copper to, to, to start pushing back on up. Uh, let's take a look here at some copper names. FCX is one you could, guys can take a look at. Look how the daily kind of tried to cut 37 and now starting to recover. If you look at this trend line, I wanted to get back above 39, but I do like how this stock is trading. If you look at the weekly, it does look like it's trying to get on back up there. And it did a kind of A move, B, C, pop back on up. Now we just want to see it hold 35s on pullbacks, get back up there through 40. And I do think you could get some strength going into this name tomorrow. So watch this one as we're going to continue looking for a push through 40 tomorrow. I'm going to actually set a high here at 39.05 to alert me if it gets through there. Uh, some other names in this area, TRQ. Look how this stock is setting up here on the weekly. You got this downtrend that we're trying to break out of. If we break out of that downtrend and hold it on pullbacks, so look for a pullback into this area. And as long as we can hold that, then we'll start looking bullish and we can get back on up there. So 369s on pullbacks, look for a move back up there towards 17. HBM also setting on up. You can see how we had this drive. Now we're looking to get right back on up through there. If we look at the monthlies, I actually like this even more. You're seeing kind of this downtrend that you're trying to get out of long-term trend is actually on a downside on copper and we're looking for it to get out of that long-term trend so let's take a look at fcx on the monthly see if we're kind of seeing the same thing long term it was in a downtrend 2020 it's gone up here so that's what we want to see kind of the same kind of chart come out of the other names in copper all right so another area that you can take a look at is coal coal also has had a good a uh, good couple of months. Now it's pulled back, trying to find some lows here to hold on to at 550s. What are some names there? I gave BTU last time it popped on up here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to look for another push through 11, back on up there towards 12. So keep this one on radar, BTU. And also HCC, I'm going to look for this one to get back on up there towards 23 and push back up. This is coal. All right, catching up with the chat. What's going on out there? What's up? What's up? Hey, Mitch, FNGU is looking like a good swing, Matty Ice. All right, let's take a look. FNGU. All right, so we're talking about micro sector FANG index 3X leveraged. Okay, so one thing, Matty Ice, 
is so with any leveraged ETF, really be careful how they do their rebalancing overnight if you're trying to swing trade these. I, I recommend you looking into that because some of these will do it the right way where it's not going to hurt you that much. But with the leverage, because of the rebalancing and the way it works daily, it could already hurt you to swing trade these. Just putting that out there. Of course, the reason why is a lot of times these do gaps on the dailies. So this one's not as gappy as some of them can be. But definitely uh, just keep that in mind. I don't want to see anyone get really caught in these uh, and then kind of get hurt. Thank you, Dick. You're out there. New subscriber. What's going on? All right, let's keep going. Uh, FNGU, let's see if we can push on up there. It is looking like it's bullish. I mean, you got this kind of weekly that you pushed on up. You're holding that on pullback. So it, it does look good. Let's take a look at some of the names in this, right? because we want to know some of the names in here. Uh, so you, this is a micro sector. So you're talking about the FANG. Okay. I mean, you're, you're talking about the biggest stocks, just leverage here. Uh, we'll see if they can get back up through the 50s. It's not really my cup of tea, but hey, I do trade gush and I do trade drip. So I can't blame you for trading leverage. Uh, and one of the things is I don't swing trade these though. You won't see me swing trade them. You'll see me close them right at the end of the day. Look to reopen it the next day as a day trade. All right. Want to get through some of these stocks. ASTR looking like we were getting mentioned here. ASTR. Let's take a look. All right. Let's go ahead. All right, so looking at Astra here, Astra is pushing back. It had a push uh, on the daily and weekly. We pushed on up there towards 1358. Now we pulled back almost all the way towards 10. One of the things to highlight here is the amount of times that we have pushed up on this chart. We pushed up once. We pushed up twice. Now we pushed up again. Now the next time we want to do that, we want to see a big push out. So I would use the monthlies to kind of draw this out. So let's do let's draw this close. Now that we kind of have this levels, let's look at the weekly. And so we can clearly see that it's been trying to get out of this stage. It's gone up here before, but it just can't hold any of the gains. We need to get it back up above 12. If not, it could test 10 on pullbacks. 10 is what I'd want to see holding on pullbacks. Where I want to see this break out of. If I want to see it break above 12, 12 is going to be an important price point to get us above this level and get into the 14s. Keep this one on watch, ASTR. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the Lucid Dragon here. I'm going to call it the Lucid Dragon. I know I call Tesla the dragon, but Lucid is trying to be a dragon holding this trend. One thing that I will state is that you can clearly see, right? So we've had these patterns before where it's been trying to get out of, you've gotten one pattern, two pattern, three. We, If we can continue through here, we can get on up there through 57 and continue through. What we don't want to see a crack is this 50 again on the downside. So now that you're up here and you've gotten out of this symmetrical triangle, let's make sure that it doesn't get down here into the 40, uh, 499s. But you want to see it continue to push, maybe a pullback towards 53s, uh, but really, we don't even want to see it get down below 51.78 now. We want it to continue this trend and keep pushing. Maybe rip through the 60s. FSR is another one that I keep on watch. This could give you some strength. If this one continues to show strength, you could see that continued strength in Lucid. Of course, keep your eye on forward also. I want to see if it can get back through that high. It's gone up and tested here before, but it can't keep these tests. Every time it does, it fails. So you had that one push that it tried, second push that it's trying. Let's let's get a third push and then a hold up here so that we can actually eventually break out of this pattern. I'm keeping an eye on forward. GM is another one that we're going to look to see it come back up to that gap. We'll see if it gets that gap fill up there towards 61, 64s. It already filled there once, but it definitely gave it back today. Uh, you see how it kind of filled here? Boom, tried to get on up there, but then cracked back down. We'll see if it can come back around. 
MU, we already went through it, so definitely rewind at LS. Uh, Fubo being mentioned in the chat. I can take a look at Fubo, and then uh, we'll probably be wrapping on up here. All right, guys, uh, looking for this to push on up there through 21. We wanted it to come back towards this 2039. It's not a bad area for it to come back. Let's take a look here at the weekly. So the weekly kind of broke out of this level, and you got this little fake out area. So to me, this was a fake out. This this 34 was a nice little fake out here. So I'm taking a look at the monthlies and I wanted to get back above that. So as you guys can see here, the monthlies have been kind of on this crackdown since this 24, 29. We want to see it hold 20, 39s on these pullbacks, uh, pretty much 20, uh, and then get right back on up there. So let's take a look at the daily. You see how it keeps holding down here towards this 2014. That's what I saw in the longer time frame. It needs to get back on up here. You're in sideways consolidation, so that's a good sign as it's not just dropping through the lows every day. Uh, but definitely you don't want to see it break through 20. I, I could see a fake out one more time, maybe going through 20, uh, 1990, but then immediately recovering and then getting up there towards 22. We'll see if it can get out of this sideways consolidation. And that's Fubo. Noah, Noah. You, hey, we'll see what happens. Uh, snow here. Let's take a look. Snowflake catching a little bit of a bounce there. Uh, this one's just a, a difficult trend here to trade. If you could see here, you kind of got into different speeds. Uh, so it's okay to draw different trend lines. Uh, so this one was on a kind of sideways speed, not really that fast in this pattern. And then we got a big lift into the pattern and the speed started increasing into the trend here. You started seeing snow jump on up there towards the 330. As you guys can see, the angle changes here. You see how this angle and this angle aren't the same ones. And this one's definitely at a steeper angle. That's showing you that the speed of the trend was faster and we went faster into the move. You want to see those nice recoveries off of that trend line and make sure that those trend lines hold. So we could look for a retrace back there. If, you, if you're looking for it to get in, I would look for it to retrace back there and hold maybe 350s on those pullbacks, then get back up there towards 400. We'll see what happens on snow here and, and if it can catch that bounce. So one of the things is when you draw your trend lines, have no fear in drawing multiple. It'll show you the speed of how the trend went through that area. All right, guys, it looks like we are going to get towards our interview. When we get back, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. We're going to get into it with Zeta. This is the cloud-based marketing technology company. So if you guys want to learn a little bit about that, stick around, press the thumbs up, and let's keep going on Money Mitch. When you want to maximize your performance in the market, you need access to the highest quality tools and news available. Benzinga Pro stands out from all of the options you'll be presented with, and their instant access to market-moving news positions you to be prepared to take on the market in the best ways possible. Here's how it works. Benzinga Pro's news desk creates original news content that's available on your main news feed and gives you actionable information about companies you may want to invest in. This news desk information gives you the chance to beat the market, receive impactful news as it breaks, and jump on trending stocks before and as they rise. And beyond that, Benzinga Pro is packed with helpful features and unique insights that give you the best information possible. There's tools like Live Audio Squawk, which streams every day with important news and timely updates. And the real-time news alerts that allow you to stay on top of every developing story you're keeping tabs on. Alerts and news will be sent straight to your inbox or delivered as live sound alerts. For those investors that want real-time, actionable, and breaking news about companies they may be looking to invest in, Benzinga Pro is the tool to use. All right, traders, let's go ahead. Let's hop right into our interview. Let's bring on David Steinberg here, the CEO of Zeta. How are we doing? I am great. How are you doing, Noah? Hey, ready to keep it going. Let's keep it going. Like always, I'm not the ARC. Unfortunately, I'm Money Mitch, but we are the ARC. It's Benzinga. We bring the the all the stocks to the retail investor because at the end of the day, you know, we, we have all these types of medias, but it's always about the retail investor here at Benzinga. So we have brought on many different kind of marketing teams in the past. We're looking forward to finding out about Zeta. So let's go ahead. Let's jump right into it. First, I want to know a little bit more about you, David. Tell me how your journey brought you to Zeta. 
Well, first, you know, uh, I, I joke I wouldn't have this job if I hadn't founded the company. But the uh, reality is that uh, this is my sixth company. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I sold three. I've now taken two public uh, and uh, I'm chairman of another one. But uh, it's uh, I always joke that I became an entrepreneur for the same reason a lot of us could. Back in 1990, when I came out of school, I couldn't get a job. <laughs> it was, it was sort of the Great Recession of that year, and uh, you know, sort of went my own way. Well, uh, like always, I mean, we all go through our ruts. I mean, hey, I mean, what we were probably in college isn't what we are today. So that's that's always an improvement there. Uh, let's get into Zeta now. Tell us a little bit about what the company is and what you guys do. So we're a data cloud and marketing cloud built into one platform. So when you think about it, one of the problems that marketers have is they need 17 to 20 different vendors to help them deliver their marketing. We have put into one platform with artificial intelligence and first party proprietary data sitting at the center of that platform, a seamless one platform solution. So you don't need a whole bunch of sort of bespoke solutions. You can get everything to do customer acquisition, customer retention, and customer monetization in one seamless platform we call the ZMP. We're, we're obviously very creative. It stands for Zeta Marketing Platform, but uh, you know, it's uh, worked for us. I'm sorry, Mitch, I can't hear you. I think you're on mute. The good old fashioned mute button there. Uh, let's keep going here. So one thing I did see is the strong revenue growth in the third quarter of 21 uh, ahead of guidance, you know, a uh, 21% increase year over year. Let's talk about this increasing here. Uh, you did also state f uh, fiscal 21 guidance uh, up by 12.5 million to 446.5 million. Are we still on pace for this? Yeah. I mean, listen, the first two quarters, we've been a public company. We have beaten guidance and raised. So, you know, we're, we feel good when we put guidance out that in the first two quarters, we've shown not only getting to that guidance, but exceeding it and, and raising guidance behind it. And listen, we feel like great companies, which we believe we are and are growing into, can give guidance that they have great confidence in and feel like they put themselves in a position where they can continue to under promise and over deliver. The, 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 the reality is that the market is really helping us right now, right? So digital transformation is one of our biggest businesses. And, you know, it's certainly not just been a good time, but we believe the next five to seven years are going to be sort of the, the biggest jump in digital transformation in history. And we're uniquely positioned to take advantage of that tailwind metric. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I've been focusing on is when we first started kind of the year in 2020, um, it was actually one of the biggest focus for of mine was uh, moving into programmatic advertising, digital move, and, you know, you know, really finally pulling that cord. You know, we we keep, keep saying that line, but there's yeah. another thing actually doing it and, and pulling that cord. And I think this was the start of it. A lot of the reason why I think the cords weren't pulled in the first place was, let's just be honest, it was a lot about the money, right? The marketing behind it and how- Well, it's we were... easy. You're doing it. It's easy. It's working, right? Mm -hmm. And And what everybody says is, you know, a crisis- and everybody says never waste a crisis, but people don't realize why, right? It's the single lowest opportunity cost time in your corporate history to affect change in your business. And that's why crises can be so valuable. What we've seen is this sort of beginning of this quantum shift to this move to digital. We by no means believe that COVID was sort of the crux of that. We believe it was the beginning of it. And what we're seeing in our business, and, and we saw it in the first two quarters that we were public, and then, of course, we raised guidance for the fourth quarter, uh, which will be the third quarter that we're public, is that we're seeing a really solid tailwind in our business. But remember, one of the big differentiators between us and our competition is not only do we have one of the world's largest first party owned data sets, we also have one of the most 
valuable patent portfolios around artificial intelligence that most people don't even realize we have. And both of those sit native to the Zeta marketing platform. Whereas if you go to any of our competitors, you're actually using a step out function for artificial intelligence and you're probably using a third party for the data so you know one of the things we also announced that i think people missed in our third quarter was we closed over 50 percent of the rfps and sales engagements we were invited to participate into in a hundred percent of the closes we displaced or beat one of the four largest marketing clouds in the world, which includes Salesforce, Oracle, Adobe, and Publicis. So as you think about that, our ability to execute and beat those companies is just accelerating because most of them have not put artificial intelligence at the core of what they're doing, and almost none of them own first-party data. So it's been a really differentiated play. And it, you know, you think about the fact that 17 companies on average show up to these RFPs, and we've won over 50% of the ones we've been engaged in. We think that shows what a differentiated platform we have. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it was going right into my question. You're already kind of nailing it here. Uh, but what really separates you guys from your competitors and the competitive advantage that Zeta has here? Uh, multiple companies here that that are, are kind of known to the markets right now, Oracle, Adobe showing up here, Salesforce. So what do you guys have? What's in the secret sauce that they don't? You know, it's not secret sauce. It's it's good old fashioned you know, strategic differences. We, we started years ago building a proprietary first party data cloud where through owning uh, discussion platforms and publishing platforms and a publishing network, we have over 225 million opted in Americans alone and almost 550 million people globally who have opted in to be in our first party data cloud. You put that together with our first party tracking pixel, which is tracked across 6.2 million publishers and over 1 trillion pages of content a month. So one of the other things I think people don't understand, Mitch, is we never use a third party cookie and we've never used Apple's IDFA. So as mm. the privacy landscape has changed, what we're seeing is the tide is going out for a lot of competitors. We're staying in the same place. So it looks like we're rising faster, <laughs> but, but in reality, of course, we are because they're going down and we're rising. But it's really misunderstood stuff when you think about never using a third party cookie, never using Apple's IDFA and owning our first party data on an opted in consumer by consumer basis. It just puts us in a really unique position when we go in to do a sales pitch, you know, Salesforce, Oracle, Adobe, Marketo, they don't have first party data integrated into their marketing clouds. Uh, we're fully integrated. Their artificial intelligence was added later. And listen, I mean, Salesforce, Oracle, Adobe, these are incredible companies, right? They've done an incredible job building their core businesses. But from a marketing cloud perspective, you know, Salesforce bought Exact Target, Oracle bought Responses, Adobe primarily uses Neolane. These are older businesses that they've they bought many years ago. And if I'm Salesforce, when I'm going to invest into my platform, I'm going to invest into my core business, right? Same thing for Adobe around publishing, same thing for Oracle around financial services packages and databases. They're exceptional companies at their core. We were built and founded to be a marketing and data cloud. It is all we do. We don't do hundreds of other things. Therefore, when we invest into our platform, we're investing into helping our enterprise clients be better at creating, monetizing, and retaining their customers. Definitely. You know, one thing I did see is that the TAM 
just might be a little bit big enough here. Let, let's take a look at that. Uh, so TAM at 36 billion here, total addressable market. And this is uh, one of the big things here is that there there is going to be competition here. Um, and I think you guys uh, doing everything in-house is definitely giving you that position uh, forward. But how is Zeta driving forward with the growth? Well, you know, once again, I think when you're winning over 50% of the RFPs and engagements you get invited to, you, you want to make sure you get to see more RFPs and more engagements, right? So what have we done? Over the last 24 months, we've doubled our sales force. Our goal is to double it again. We're investing heavily in growth. We've been able to do that while maintaining a fairly sizable, you know, mid-teens operating margin as it relates to EBITDA. So not only are we growing in sort of the, you know, over the last couple of quarters, the mid-20s, you're, you know, you've got a, a mid to low teens operating margin. On top of that, we are even able to double our sales force over the last 24 months while maintaining that. And we're going to continue to invest for growth. We want to get more salespeople. And we want to continue to keep our platform on the cutting edge and out front. So, you know, for us, it's all about sales and engineering. <laughs> it's not complex. Uh, you know, we have one of the best product development teams in the world and one of the best data teams in the world. And it's our job to continue to make sure that we get those products in front of as many enterprises as we possibly can. All right, so now let's get into the revenue mix and how this is a strength and helps the business. Uh, there's a good slide on 19. Let's go ahead and check that out. And can you explain me the revenue mix and, and why is it a good structure? Yeah, so it's interesting. We we get knocked on this, which I think is sort of funny. Uh, you know, you look at sort of companies that are in the advertising technology space, like Trade Desk and and others, and they generally they have no recurring revenue. Then you look at some of our competitors in the software space and they might be at 70 or 80 percent. Right now, we're sort of at 50 50, which is confusing everybody. <laughs> About 50 percent of our revenue is long term subscription software revenues and 50 percent of our revenue is reoccurring. It's not episodic. And this is something that really gets lost when investors look at us, in my, in my humble opinion. Our clients have been with us on average for three years and scaling. We see what the revenue is going to be, which is one of the reasons we've been able to beat and raise in our first two quarters as a public company and why we were able to raise guidance in the fourth quarter of this year, which will be our third quarter as a public company. We went public in June is because we have an incredible visibility into our business. We would even tell you that we have an 85 plus percent visibility into any year we're entering. And when we enter a quarter, it's even higher than that because a lot of that reoccurring business, I'm sorry, a lot of that re, uh, sorry, if you put the slide back up, we've got recurring and reoccurring. If you look at a lot of that reoccurring business, we really understand what it's gonna be you know, one, two, three quarters in advance. And a lot of it is contracted out through a year. It's just not three year contracts, which fits the definition of sort of the reoccurring. And by the way, we expect to continue to grow our recurring revenue. And if you would ask me this question three, four years ago, it might've been 60, 40 reoccurring to recurring. Now it's 50, 50. And that's a metric that we feel we can continue to grow and will continue to grow. In fact, last quarter, we announced that our bookings were over $16 million for the quarter, 90% of which was recurring subscription revenue with, you know, sort of 10% cost of goods sold associated with it. Uh, and we're seeing that component of our business growing at an accelerated pace, but the reoccurring business is still in many cases contractual. It's just not long-term by recurring definition, but, but we feel like we have an incredible visibility into it. And once again, that's one of the reasons I think we have such high degrees of confidence as we look at our projections. 
Yeah, you know, one thing I, I do like about that, it just gives you some diversity also. Uh, sure. you, you don't need to only go for one-sided uh, contracts, right? Um, we can we can go where the clients want to be. And what people also don't realize, and Mitch, you're totally right, is often we'll start on the reoccurring side and then move them to recurring. Because sometimes companies want to get to know you before they sign a three, four, five-year contract. And we have the flexibility to be able to do that. Whereas companies that are solely focused on recurring, I think they're a little bit, a little bit hamstrung. Yep, definitely. So here's a, a question from the chat. I'll also combine it with one that I had earlier that I was going to touch is uh, some of your blue chip customers. I mean, you guys have a lot of customers. Uh, so RM in the chat is asking who is uh, Zeta's target customer. So let's go ahead and, and tackle that question. Yeah. So first, thank you, RM. We appreciate the question. I, I think it's interesting to note that 34% of the Fortune 1000, I'm sorry, 34% of the Fortune 100 largest companies in the world use our platform. So we're already working with blue chip customers, but we really focus on sort of what, what they call the 10,000 largest companies in the United States. And, and you know, we're an internationally based, I mean, we're based in New York, but we have an international component to our business, although it's it's smaller than uh, the US based component by by a bunch. But if you think about it, you know, eight of the 10 largest automotive manufacturers in the world are using our platform. Four of the five largest banks in the United States are using our platform. Three of the five largest quick serve restaurants in the United States. These are these are large companies. So when we win with a client, we're generally able to scale that client client pretty meaningfully over the years to come where we start. And one of the metrics our chief financial officer, Chris Greiner, likes to talk about is how we scale our already scaled clients. And we really like to answer our end's question specifically, clients that have a very high lifetime value per user and have a high degree of understanding of the metrics of their clients are our best customers because our platform is so attribution based, we're one of the very few guys that can say, we ran this marketing through our software platform and this is exactly what it cost you to create a customer. Very few companies, because all of our data is deterministic and self-owned, all of our artificial intelligence is self-owned, our ability to build the attribution models down to the individual are almost unparalleled. So that really gives us a meaningful advantage in those cases. And of course, companies that have a high lifetime value like automotive, insurance, financial services, quick serve restaurants, e-commerce, they are willing to spend more money on marketing. Uh, so we, we tend to like that in a customer, right? Yeah, can't go wrong with that. Uh, let's go ahead. I got... Uh... One kind of major question here, and then we'll touch a light one here. Uh, last question I have is, of course, we're seeing the evolving data privacy environment right now, um, and that's ever changing. We don't know really where it's going to, and that's one of the concerns I'm sure uh, that comes up with the company. But how is Zeta positioned here to overcome the hurdles and thrive on the data? Such a great question. I think, you know, when we founded the company, John Scully and I, 14 years ago, we believed that permission from the consumer to market to them was going to be quintessential to where we thought regulatory change was going. And, you know, for once in my life, I was totally right. <laughs> you know, it couldn't have been more dead on. Uh, we're literally CCPA compliant. We're GDPR compliant. We're compliant with almost anywhere anybody is drafting regulations globally because ultimately, even though we touch a very large percentage of the people on the internet every moment of every day, we're only marketing to the people who have opted in to receive offers from our publishing platforms, our discussion platforms, and our other software platforms that enable publishers. So that gives us a very unique advantage because everything's first party to us. When we build a CDP for one of our clients, we're able to merge their data with our first party data and unlock thousands of incremental touch points for the enterprise client while only synthesizing everything to the Zeta ID number. 
They don't see the personally identifiable information to the consumer. This is something that I think a lot of people do not understand about us. The enterprise clients only see the Zade ID. Now, they might see the 3,000 attributes, demographic, psychographic, behavioral, transactional attributes that are associated with that Zade ID. The beauty of that is as the artificial intelligence gets smarter because we feed in who's purchasing on who's doing what, we're able to expand the audience to other people who are doing those same things. But guess what? If a client fires us, they lose 100% of that learning because it all resolves to the Zade ID. I think this is one of the reasons we have such an incredibly high net retention rate and such an incredibly high retention rate with our large scale clients. Definitely shows us that the platform is something that, uh, you know, you, you, when we pull the plug, uh, we, we, we want to have that data too. So it looks yeah. like, well, you're going to have to stay on it with Zeta if you want to have that advantage. Uh, thank you for joining me here and talking about the company. Last question I have was how did the Zeta Live 21 go? Oh, it was great. You know, our first, thank you for asking. It was our first ever global conference, uh, you know, we were targeting 2,000 people signing up. We ended up close to 5,000. Uh, you know, we had industry luminaries like Sir Martin Sorrell, Michael Rubin, Emron Khan, uh, Adam Singola, and others come on. Uh, it was just, it was really exciting. And, and, you know, I saw you were talking about Snowflake before I came on. I really enjoyed that chart you put up, by the way. I thought it was very impressive. Uh, we announced one of our largest deals in history with Snowflake on stage during the conference. So How did you know it. Look at that. How about that? I couldn't have teed that up any better, and I, I should have mentioned it earlier in the in the conversation. But I just the the reality is that we are going to fully integrate the Zeta marketing platform into the Snowflake technology stack, and we're going to jointly go to market together. Because you know, we believe that Snowflake has the best clean rooms out there, and they believe we have among the best marketing platforms. So the ability to fully integrate and go to market together, I think a lot of people also don't understand the type of sales velocity that's going to unlock for us. Uh, and you know, quite frankly, the halo effect of Snowflake doing that with us. Uh, and we announced it on stage at Zeta Live. The, the funny thing, the backstory to that, Mitch, was that they were doing their Snowflake conference on the same day. <laughs> so it was really complex to or orchestrate a press release and a Oof. panel with them on the same day of their conference. So, so one of their guys who came on for us, we had some people in their conference, they had people in our conference. So it was, it was pretty cool. No, definitely. As a, as a person that's a part of some of the events here at Benzinga, I know how much that must have been. And let alone with dealing with PR and putting that out at the same time. Hey, well, looks like it went great. I'm glad to hear that, David, your first event. And if you guys haven't checked that out, you guys can actually go to the website and find it on on demand. Uh, so Go check it out on the website, guys. Right on there in the investor, uh, investor relations, you guys will be able to find that event. I, I, I had to check out some of it. I already saw some of it. So you guys, if you haven't seen it, I know that it was a little earlier in the month, but I still think you might get something out of it. So go check it out. Yeah, Appreciate I think if you, you go if you go to ZetaGlobal.com, it's right above the headline. And, and people who do not often speak – spoke at this conference and it was just amazing to get some of them to come but mitch this has been so great i really appreciate you hey thank you david for joining me guys this is zeta global holdings the ticker is zeta can't be that hard to find on the new york stock exchange the relatively new ipo thank you for joining me david and we'll look forward to having you back in the future I look forward to it. Hopefully I won't mess your name up the first time next no time. No worries. Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> I have a nephew named Noah. So I didn't really well, it said, it said Noah on your thing. And, and I knew your name was Mitch, but it confused me. <laughs> hey, not, not a worry, man. Like I said, the ARC is right here. The retail investor. on. We Benzinga. love the ARC. Hey, this is the ARC. We're here. We'll see you down. Uh, thank you, David, for joining me. 
All right, guys, there's another exclusive interview right here on Money Mitch. I hope that you guys appreciated me getting to Zeta and bringing you guys this story. You guys know how I'm all about the story. Here you guys got the story of the digital transformation going into that cloud-based marketing. You guys see it. They're building everything in-house. I thought that's my biggest take from the interview is that they're focusing on having everything under their control. And that's important moving into an area where we're going to be focusing on on the privacy data, uh, you're going to want these companies to have everything under control and, and not be third party. One thing that he mentioned cons uh, consistently was that. So if that's one major thing I got out of the interview, if you guys got something else, please let us know in the comments after what you guys got out of that interview or maybe a company you want to see next on Money Mitch. Like always, guys, smash the thumbs up. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. I'll be back tomorrow. And, and of course, on live trading. So, hey, keep battling out there. I know it's a tough market. It's never going to be easy. But one thing is going to be true is that I'll be here battling with you guys out there. So smash that like and we'll see you next time on Money Mitch. Let's keep the party going. We'll see you guys tomorrow.